about motherhood and Jah's law. Jah's law on motherhood. That's what this Torah portion, portion number 27, known as Tazaria. Tazaria or Ki Tazaria. Ki Tazaria. So let us show you this another way. All right, here we're looking at Bamaringa. We're looking at the Amharic, right? The Metzhaf Kedus, the Book of the Seven Seals, and the digital program, the computer program, um, Iota or Yota, right? And this is the Orit, Orit, Zelewawian, Orit, Zelewawian, 12 or Asara, Hulet. says, Igaziabi Harim Musain and Di below Tanagaro. And the Lord, the sustainer, Yahweh, spake to Moses Musain, saying, or in Di like this, saying, Tanagaro, he spoke, or he spoke to him. He spoke it, he spoke him, he spoke to him, right? And it says right here, Le Israel. Lejoch in di bile nigaracho sate bitaregis wend lejim bitter weld sabat ken yahil yarekasech nat in the hemwa maragem warat te rek salech te rek salech. Speak to the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed. You know, we, we said this at the beginning of the Torah portion um, um, of Leviticus, that Leviticus, some of the key words of Leviticus, one key word is if. You understand? Notice that even here, if, like if a man will sacrifice or if a man want to give an offering or if this or if that should happen. You know, because a lot of folks today, you know, we live in a very iffy, iffy, iffy time, right? So I just see this this idea is like fractally, it's embedded, it's a, it's, it's a fractal, like sacred geometry, even in the the living word of Jah. So here it says, if a woman, now, in the Hebrew, let's bring up the word program right here, right? In the Hebrew, I don't know if you can, how well you can see this, but let us move this around some so that ho hopefully you can see this a little bit, a little bit larger, all right? See, it's a little bit larger, right? Um, and let's bring down the Hebrew, right? They'll bring up the Hebrew right here, right? And you see, key, this is the key, key, ta, z, ri, y, a. Key, ta, z, ri, a. Ta, z, ri, a. Right? If she conceives, b, ta, regis. B, ta, regis. B, ta, regis. It says, if a woman have conceived seed, and born a man child. See, a woman can conceive, but due to um, certain things, might not be able to um, birth the child, right? And and unfortunately, that has and 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 happens in 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 this world. You understand? But now, when the process is 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 able to come to a full a full cycle that she conceives, right, and a child, and now begins with a man-child. Now, remember how in Christianity, well, in Christ, we're told, and, and this is a basic principle. A lot of churches, they, 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 they preach this and teach this, and, and in that sense, it is true that the whole Scripture or all of the Scripture, you understand, um, when we look at the Old Testament, is speaking of Christ. And if we keep that in mind, so we're here in the Old Testament, but not with a veil on our eyes. That veil is now removed in Moshiach. Remember, the law or Torah 
the Torah is our schoolmaster. You understand? Is our she she is our nanny. She she's our mogzit. She's our pedagogue. You understand? Is our our child conductor. That's the word pedagogos. You know, pedagogoi. You understand? In the in the Greek, is a child conductor like a mogzit. You understand? So the law we're studying law is Torah. So the Torah is our schoolmaster. This is what we say. This is basic discipleship. So those brothers and sisters who've asked and who seek discipleship begin off with with remembering the Shabbat, yeah, the weekly Shabbat, learn of the annual Shabbat or, or the seven to eight Shabbat that we have, the three pilgrim festivals, um, the Shilosha Regali or the Selassie Regali, the pilgrimage festivals. And during those three times, we just pass one time, Fasika Pesach, in the next no less than 50 days now, we're going to have Pentecost Day or the, the Mecca or Shuvaot, Shavuot, Shavuot coming up, which is, which is harvest. Now, true, these are the feasts and festivals that we will fulfill and we are learning of, but they must be fulfilled in the land. So there, there are conditions. You see, this is their conditions. Even the love of Jah has conditioned faith. You understand? He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son because he, he had pity and tender compassion and mercy, mercy triumph above judgment that he sent his, his own son that whosoever should my men amen in him should not perish but should have eternal life. So it's true that the entirety of Scripture, you understand? So we have to see Christ within this. We have to see Yeshua in this. So when it says a man child, for my brothers and sisters, think of Lij Teferi as, as, as that template. You understand? The, the Father and the Son, the Son and the Father, the two truths, you understand, of the Ma'at, being fulfilled in the Father and the Son, the Son and the Father. So the Son, Yeshua, came to testify of the Father, and the Father, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, has testified in these, you understand, in these last days, you understand, cutting these days short for the elect's sake, for the Cheruyan, for the for the Shem, the Shemsu uh, Horus, in other words, the followers or the Shushin Kharui, you understand, the followers of the chosen, the followers of Christ. So we're looking at the Old Testament here, and so the man-child, it is speaking of Christ. Now, when we turn to the New Testament, it's interesting concerning this particular area of the law of motherhood, because we find that, I think it's in, um, it's in Luke, I believe Luke actually makes that particular um, connection right here where we actually have, um, um, I think Luke 2, let's go to Luke chapter 2 for a moment. Let's just turn our Bibles, take a note of it. As you can't turn the Bible there, but if you can, take a note so you can go over it in your own study. Chapter 2, right, chapter 2. And now we're going to have this fulfilled in Yeshua, which is very, very interesting. Because some would tell you that these laws are no more. And they want you to live like a Gentile. You know what I mean? And um, the circumcision of Yeshua, right? The section called the circumcision of Yeshua. Um, Luke chapter 2, verse 21, it says, And when eight days were accomplished, for the circumcising of the child, when the eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called, what was his name called? His name was called Yahshua. His name was called Yeshua. All right. And I'm sure, I'm sure you recognize this particular icon right there. You understand? Um, this is, this is one of my favorites. I call it like a black kind of Michelangelo, black Da Vinci type. And I actually think that Da Vinci, one of the things he understood was that the Madonna was black. 
it seems to be so on some of his uh, paintings that they don't show too much publicly. So this one, this particular painting right here is one of I and I favorites by Tim Tim Ashkar, the Madonna and Child, right? So while we read this part, you can see this as a fulfillment now of this Old Testament portion that we find in this week's Torah portion, Kitazuria Bitaregis, where it says, And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called. So we see the name now being connected with this eighth day, um, Yeshua or Joshua, which was so named of the Melaach of the angel before he was conceived, before he was what? Conceived. Before he was conceived. Scripture. Speak to the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed. Scripture which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her what? Purification. What's it talking about? Her days of her purification. Her purification. Now, in the marginal note, it has right here sanctity. Sanctity. Then it has underneath holy persons. Holy persons. Then gives Luke 9, 26, Matthew 4, 5. Um, Revelation 22:11. So it says, and when the days of her purification, according to the law of Musa, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished. That means that they were fitum, tefetsamet. They were completed. They were paitum, right? They were fitum. They brought him to Jerusalem or Jerusalem. To present him, <laughs> and, and, and check this out, this is interesting. To present him to who? To present him to the Lord. So now the Lord, Jesus Christ, was born, right? And, uh, and, 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 and his mother kept Moses' law, and we find that he also fulfilled the law of his father God. You understand? That, that he was now brought forward according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, to present him to Adonai. So when Adonai was, was born, he was brought forward to be presented to himself. So when we say Haile Selassie is elect of himself, some don't get it. So brothers and sisters, don't, don't go through the mysteries before you steal the basics. You know, I mean, I mean deal with the basics. He is the elect of God. Ask them, do you know who God is? And then teach them. Then they'll begin to see this for themselves because here's a very interesting verse, verse 22, Luke 2 and 22. You understand? The Lord was born, the baby Jesus was born, Yeshua, you understand? And he was presented to the Lord. In other words, the Son, see, when you understand the Son was now presented to the Father. As Hala Selassie represents the Father now speaking, you understand, and, and, and manifesting of the, of the Son, the things of the Son. Uh, John's Gospel perfectly explains it to those who have acquaintance. Verse 23 says, As it is written in the law of the Lord. As it is written where? So he was presented to the Lord as it is written in the law of the Lord. Now notice something. We have the law of Moses being spoken of here. Now we have the law of the Lord. Every male that what? The womb that openeth the womb. Right, and this is Exodus now, 13 and 12, and Exodus 13 and 16, then also Numbers 8 and 17. This is in the marginal in the New, the New Testament um, Schofield Reference Bible on page 1073, um, if you want to document it. As it is written in the law of the Lord, so we have the law of Moses is Leviticus. And we was explaining in a couple of vids about what happened after the golden calf incident. You understand how that was like a fall, that was like a step back. You, you know, so in Exodus, it's, it's the Lord that, that brought, presented his law. Now, Moses and the elders, you understand, legislated these things. You understand, because they were supposed to be a nation of the priesthood, but they already failed. You understand? So now we have an interim administration. 
You, you know, interim the the the, the Levi and and the and the priesthood is the inter uh, interim. It was not the will of the Almighty for that to go on, but because of the weakness of the people. It's like the law for divorce, you, you know, because of the weakness of the people. The people were not able, they were not strong enough spiritually to fulfill the intention from the beginning, but the Almighty revealed his intention. You understand? Um, from the very beginning. It says, as it is written in the law of the Lord, Adonai, Egziavi, Hergeta, Kurios, every male, every what male, in context, every black male, but every male, but in this context, Exodus, looking at Exodus chapter 13, verse 12, and verse 16, it says, every male that openeth the womb. But now, if you turn to Exodus chapter 13, do this with with I, those who are studying, those who are passively just listening when they didn't believe me, you know, but really I, I would say it'd be better for you to check this out for yourself, you understand, because it's, it's, it's one thing when somebody else say, look what I found, but then when you can say, well, look what I found, you understand, or oh, I found it too, I found it myself, okay, Exodus 13 and 12, it says, that thou shalt set apart to Yahweh, all that openeth the matrix, all that openeth the matrix, every firstling that cometh of a beast which thou hast, the males, the males, right? And we know Beta is Arael, then as now is black. You understand? In, in the true humanity, you know, his true humanity. So we can read this as. That thou shalt set apart. Apart means holy. Yet the kedesa, set apart, kedu, separate to Yahweh, to Jah, all that openeth the matrix, and every firstling that cometh of a beast which thou hast, the males shall be the Lord's, shall be Yahweh's. So it's interesting because some interpret this. And even some in the Talmudic and, and, and among the Euro, European Judaism also sees an interpretation but takes it to a certain extreme that you find even in the protocols, find reflected in the protocols. Here, one might say, this is speaking about the, 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 the sons and daughters or the sons, should we say, in the male context, as well as the male animals. So, so the male humans and the male animals. Others would say, well, this is speaking about I and I and the other beast people. You understand? You know, the other beast people like the um the goat head, the goat head folks, the you know the people who are worship Baphomet or who are under Baphomet under the sin law. You you, you know what I mean? Whether white or black. So you can understand it like that as well. Verse fifteen it says, and it shall come to pass when Pharaoh fell on would hardly let us go. And it came to pass when, like, we could say when Babylon didn't, see, Babylon don't want to let I and I go. And when we, when we study in Torah, we find out that, that even Egypt didn't want to let the Beta Israel go. You know, because we're the reason why they can sing all the time every year at memorial times and other holidays, national holidays. God bless America, because the, the lost sheep don't know who they be. You know, <laughs> for real, that's why God bless America. You know, because like uh, Mr. T would say, you know, pity the fool. You know, job pity the fool because we are foolish, the lost sheep, because they, they don't even know who they are and, and, and just how close they are, you know, to destruction. In other words, you know, how the grace is because of grace that we have come thus far. And it came to pass when Pharaoh would hardly let us go that Yahweh shew, excuse me, Yahweh slew, you could, uh, he slew, all the firstborn, all the firstborn, pay attention to that word, note that, all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, just like he's about to do, you understand, in the same sense with the firstborn in this spiritual Egypt, that is not his son, that is not Beta Israel, or is not even the mixed multitude with his son, 
and who don't believe or accept the God of the Hebrews. You know what I'm saying? The, 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 the God of the Jah of the Rastafari. Both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. So you see that right there? So it, it basically describes the firstborn are the ones who open the matrix. Whoever opened the matrix is a firstborn. So I want you to overthink that matrix connection right there, right? It says, um, and therefore I sacrifice to Yahweh all that openeth the matrix. I sacrifice to Yahweh, I offer, I korban, in other words, to Yahweh all that what openeth the matrix. Being males, being male, so we have to understand this. Being, it's like it's like it's like the the Matrix movie. You see, Neo was who Neo was, and Trinity who was who Trinity was. And, and see, it worked like that. Imagine both of them trying to be the same thing, and so forth. That's the that's confusion. You know what I'm saying? So it says, um, all that openness the Matrix being males, but all the firstborn of my children. Notice that. But all the firstborn of my children, I redeem. Now, Yahweh is showing something here in this because he's really pointing to his son. He is really pointing to, in and through all this, he is pointing to Yeshua. He is pointing to our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christo. So we have it right here, getting back to Luke chapter 2, right, verse 23, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Whenever you find it kind of as it is written, I mean, don't you, aren't you ever curious, well, where is it written? I just like to see that. Show me, you know, like show me or, or look for it. Where is it written? And that's where we just went to Exodus chapter um, Exodus uh, chapter 13. Look at that. chapter. I see 13 is very much in this particular series, this portion here. The numbers, certain numbers stand out more than others. Um, and, and then there's the, the Kabbalah, the Kebbalah in that. Um, so it says, every male that openeth the womb shall be called Kedus shall be called holy to the Lord, shall be called kedus to the Lord, all of the firstborns. So we have two senses of the firstborn. One sense of firstborn is, in the literal sense, firstborn. Then we have the spiritual sense of firstborn. You understand? One who has made a, a, a choice. You understand? Who has chosen the red pill in that sense, and the red, you understand, would symbol be symbolic of sacrifice or the blood. You understand? Who has chosen the blood of Yeshua, not to be just under the blue. You understand? Which on a level is law, sky, heaven, but blue is also an illusion too. It's not really when you study blue and the azure and the, and the color level. Um, as you know, Kabbalistically, you kind of understand that. But it says this right here. Now, here's how now this is going to dove is going to dove once again. It's going to dove in and and use the word dove. Dove is a key. You know how we use these these words dovetail. You know that's a verbal hieroglyph. Watch him say, um, and and that just dovetailed into the next thing. Dovetail. What's going on there? You see, now we just say it before they, they, they would draw, draw it or describe it right there. You understand? They would draw it or describe it, and then one would get the idea. Now, this folds back in on itself in that sense. You understand? It, is, it, it, it has a, 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 a resonance um, as we go forward in Luke 2, 23, as it is written, the law of the Lord, we went there, Exodus 13, every male that openeth the womb, and Exodus is the matrix, shall be called holy, kedus, to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice, the red pill, you understand, according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, that which is said in the law of the Lord. Now notice something, the red and the blue pill for a moment. One can take, you understand, you know, one can take the blue pill, you understand, staying under law, you, you see what I'm saying, being under law, or one can accept the red pill, the blood of Yeshua, you understand, and the sacrifice, you understand, and be in-laws. That's what it's saying. That's what it's saying right there, and be in-laws. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of, of Jah, the law of the Lord, a 
pair of turtle doves, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. I find this to be interesting, too. This is just to document this for the record. April, what is it? April 20, 21st, um, 2012. Um, this week they had a couple of stories in the news about somebody going around killing pigeons. You know, I mean, it's just kind of, it's it's kind of, um, as one to say, it's kind of weird and 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 um, ironic there. You know that this story is also very much on that sort of a level um, connected with this particular Torah portion, with this particular time. You know what I mean? It's like, once again, like a, a, a resonance. You can find like a resonance or even a synchronicity within itself. Now, that picture that we had a little bit earlier, let's see if we can bring that up. The picture, um, the image right here that's in the Vayika, uh Let's back this up right here. Remember this image right here? Remember this image right here? the two turtle doves. Now, this is also connected with this Torah portion, because when you go to Leviticus chapter 12, that's what we're at, right? Chapter 12, verse 8. Let's just scroll forward, which is the end of the chapter. The chapter only has eight verses. This particular chapter, in a very key way, only has eight verses. And you understand, speaking to the law of motherhood. It's not burdensome. You see what I'm saying? It's not burdensome. The law of motherhood. In the eighth verse, it says, and if she be not able to bring a lamb, and if she is not able to bring a lamb, what, what, what should she do? Then she shall bring two turtles or two young pigeons, the one for the burnt offering and the other for a sin offering, and the priest shall make an atonement, an atonement for her, and she shall be clean. Now, why is this? Because this is, this is coming under the law of motherhood. This right here is coming under the law of motherhood. So that's a symbolic right there. This particular, I think, Goodall, you understand? This Frederick Goodall's, um, the poor widow's offering. This is the poor widow's offering. So isn't this interesting that um, we have this connection now with, with um Yeshua with the Yesus Christos. And now you might be able to overstand a little more this particular picture right here. Um um Kama Kama or it's called Koma, the woman and the child, seated right here in the Virgo constellation. And then we have this seating right here of of the black Madonna. Now this come from this come from Dendera, from ancient Egypt, Dendera right here. And then we have even the Ethiopian picture. You understand right here of Kedistin Gilmarium, this same one. Now, this was prefigured already in, in Jai's stars and was known um, thousands of years ago and is recorded in Dendera, you understand, um, witnessed in the heavens, witnessed, you understand, in the stars. And what's so very interesting is the connection is with Yeshua HaMoshia, with the Black Madonna right here. But overall, it's, it's symbolic for all the sisters, you understand, the daughters of, of God, you understand, in the law of motherhood that we're studying right here in this um, 12th chapter, 12th chapter of, uh, of uh, Leviticus, and in this portion known as Tazaria, Ki Tazaria, if she conceives. Tazaria, she conceived, or Bamarinya in the Amharic and Hala Selassie's Bible, Bitaregis, Bitaregis, and let's just show you the chart once again right here. You understand? Um, right here, and you can see this on the chart right here, the 27th. Here's where we're at, Leviticus 12 and 1 to Leviticus 13 and 59. So we're dealing with the first part of this, the law of 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 motherhood, and we want to give you a connection of that Christologically. We want to give you the crystal. You understand? We want to give you the crystal of that, the Christ of El. In other words, what the Moshia, what Jah's Messiah, what the Jah Messianic link with that. That's why we went to Leviticus 2 and 22. You understand? Then we had to link once again with Exodus 13 for the matrix 
for the matrix connection of it. And there's much more in it, but hopefully once and once we get an opportunity to find the truth for themselves by studying and doing due diligence to note the key, uh, you know, key points and key references, right, to document it. So here this is speaking of childbirth. God or Jah told Moses to tell the Beta Israel, the Israelites, that when a woman at childbirth bore a boy or a male child, she was to be unclean, ritually, you could say, um, um, unclean or exempt, in other words, seven days, and then remain in a state of blood purification for 33 days. Now, remember, I was just, that's why I had to put that vid, and some might have seen the vid about the Eton Pates or Etam, the Etham, the Etam Patsy, you understand, case and everything, you know, a case of a missing uh, um, secular Jewish boy, a missing secular Jewish boy that happened 33 years ago. Now they're reinvestigating it. And get this, get this, yo. Um, Ethan or Eton is biblical, right? Ethan or Eton is biblical. And the guy they're trying to blame it on, the black guy, they're trying to blame it on, not the, the white people's man, boy, pedophilic, homosexual um, um, love association, whatever possible um, child sacrifices to Molech, because we know they worship Molech, you know, and, and, and to Molech and these kind of um, false gods that they worship, they have to sacrifice people, you understand, or children especially, you, you know what I'm saying? So when we look at Etam, Really, it's Ethan, but then you know that E-T, like some say Tazria, um, Ashkenazi Jews will say Tazria, but Sephardic and other Jews will more pronounce it as Tazria. So we have Ethan, you understand, Ethan, who was an Israelite, one of the wise men of Solomon's time, an ancestor of Asaph, and the name means ancient, the name means um, perennial. Uh, perpetual, firm, strong, and even by implication, mighty. But then we have Etham, right? Now, Etham and Etan, you know, it's Etan and Etam, the M, like An Bessa, An, An Bessa, you know. So, you know, like Nigus, Migus, you know, you, you have the N and the M changing places sometimes. But now, there, there's also another word, Etam. There's Etam. Now, Etam means airy. Etam means airy. You know, airy, like somebody said, that's, that's very airy. You know, well, it means, that's what it means. It's, it's Hebrew. Go look it up. First Chronicles 4 and 32. You know what I'm saying? First Chronicles, Judges 15 and 8. You, you know, let's get some history on this, right? It's a village of Simeon. It's a city or a defense in Judah. It was built or fortified by Rehoboam, Re Re Reboam. You understand Reboam, which seems to be this generation of of lost of lost founders. You know, um, we even call some of the 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 black Hebrew Israelites that utter all sort of um, blasphemy and error. You understand against the majesty of Hila Selassie the first and I not Ethiopian Hebrews. They're like Rehoboam. So yeah, they they they're zealous, but they lack the knowledge of the King of Kings and His Christ, like Rehoboam. Um, there's the rock where Samson went to live was called Etam after he had destroyed the Philistines' crops and killed many of their people. But the, the meaning of Etam, I know this is really for another kind of vid, but I'm just going to put it here since we're speaking about it. It means numbers of rapacious birds. You see all those ones down there in that Soho area? Numbers of rapacious birds, a layer of ravenous beasts. You know, it's an aggregation of thoughts and consciousness given over to force, violence, and greed. Now, when you look at the next one, so there's three words that link with that missing boy's thing, right? The next one is Etam, or Esam, right? That was the border of the sea, sea bound, the extremes of habitation, desolation, a sign of them. Etam can also mean a sign of them, their universal symbol. But I noticed that Etham, this was a place at the edge of the wilderness where the Beta Israel or the Israelites camped after leaving Sukkot. 
after leaving Sukkot, where they had the Sukkahs or the Das Baal, after they left the tents, they, the, their camp, after they broke camp. That was the last place. That's where they camped after leaving Sukkot and, and before. That's where they camped before crossing the Red Sea. Before crossing the Red Sea. This is what, like, 2012, in a sense, is like. You know what I'm saying? It's like crossing that Red Sea. And some will be drowned, you understand, because they're on the side of the spiritual Egyptians. Now, this is Exodus 13 again. So we got another hit, Exodus 13 and 20. We'll go into a little bit more on the um, um, dealing with the, the you know, what, what is the, the, the Ethiopic Kabbalah or the Rastafari overstanding of this whole Etam thing. But let's, let's get back to, um, let's forward to where we were in this. But just how there is a link even right there. You, you might say, well, that's about some boy. But I'm looking, look, look at 33. You see how 33? And remember, he is from a Jewish, even a Ashkenazi, a European Jewish family, and they showed his rabbi, what was his grandfather, uncle? Grandfather, his, his rabbi grandpa's on TV the other day, and I was like, "Wow, I, I don't, you know, I have a pretty good memory, even from 33 years ago. I, I don't remember this this person at all. Of course, they could look different, but but we you don't. Know, you you have to go with your um um your not just instincts, but your intuition, spiritual intuition. You know, especially if you have if you have set yourself apart in spirit and in truth. If you've denied yourself." And, and and picked up, you know, your cross and you're following Yeshua, you understand, then you can trust your intuition or instinct. So you can trust my father and your father, you understand, the father of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. So this portion here under the law of, of motherhood that we have under the law of motherhood right here, it speaks that when a woman gives birth to a male child, she was... Um, uh, ritually, you understand, um, exempt, you can say, or in the translation, unclean seven days. She was in a, she had a medical, you know, medical, um, I keep forgetting this, what you call it, medical justification, medical something. I've, I've heard this phrase before. Um, some of you all probably are saying it right now. Give thanks. And then remain in a state of blood purification for 33 days. Right, so the 33 and the 7. Wow, if she bore a girl, now if she were to be a girl child, because some, even though we're talking about the law of motherhood, some might be like, you're so talking about black men. What about the black female? Okay, for the black female, if, if the mother bears now a black female, yeah, right, a black male, I mean a black male and now a black female, she was to be unclean 14 days. It's double. Double trouble, right? It's double, right? Unclean 14 days and remain in a state of blood purification for 66, 66 days. Now, you know, a lot of our folks, and I'm so happy that, you know, ones who are in, on some levels of the, the consciousness, the black consciousness, I've begun to, like, even study the Hebrew and get into Kabbalah, Kabbalah, or the Kabbalah on a certain level. Even though they may recognize that, yeah, Yeshua or Jesus is black, so forth and so on, they they may not go to the, you know, they may not be as as so called fundamental, you understand, as many of I and I, you know, who advocate, you understand, who advocate the, you know, Torah portion reading the feedings. But once hopefully we'll be able to see how the knowledge. You understand how this particular knowledge is all linked, even in these particular numbers, you know, even even through the numbers that are associated with 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 the law of motherhood, that we have the seven, we have the thirty three. We have the doubling, the folding over of that, the doubling of that, the fourteen, right, for a girl. You understand, for a girl child, and then we also have the 66, which is the 33, doubled as well. But very interestingly enough, the number 7 is also by some thought to be, oh, the Illuminati uses that number. No, the, the Illuminati 
and the occultists, those who who don't submit to the will of our God and Father, the God and Father, our black Lord and Savior, Joshua, those who don't submit to Jesus Christos in spirit and in truth, whatever they want to call themselves, they don't use these numbers. They abuse these numbers. In other words, they abuse that which is of God to get a alternative or an opposite or a contrary or an anti to get an anti result. You know, that's how they utilize these so-called numbers. 